thank everyone that is here this morning and those that are watching online. Let's all stand. We're going to lift up the name of the Lord here this morning. You want chains to be broken here. Yeah. Oh, there is power in the name of Jesus. There is power in the name of Jesus. Yes, there is. Yes, there is. There is power in the name of Jesus to break every chain, to break every chain, to break every chain, to break every chain, to break every chain. To break every chain. There is power in the name of Jesus. Oh, yes. And there is power in the name of Jesus. Yes, there is. And there is power in the name of Jesus. To break every chain, to break every chain, to break every chain. Oh yes, oh yes. To break every chain, to break every chain, to break every chain. There's an army rising up. There's a prayer warriors get ready. There's an army rising up. We're looking for intercessors. Oh, yes, oh, yes. There's an army rising up to break every chain, to break every chain, to break every chain. Oh, yes. To break every chain, to break every chain, to break every chain. There's an army rising up. Oh, yes, yes, there's an army rising up right now. Oh, yes, there's an army rising up. So I cry now to Jesus to break every chain, to break every chain, to break every chain. Oh, for Jesus right now to break every chain. To break every chain, to break every chain, oh yes, oh yes, to break every chain, right now, to break every chain, in Jesus' name, break every chain, oh, and there is power in the name of Jesus, oh yes, oh yes, there is power in the name of Jesus, oh, come on, come on. And there is power in the name of Jesus to break every chain, to break every chain, to break every chain. Oh, yes, to break every chain, to break every chain, to break every chain. Get ready, get ready, get ready, get ready to break every chain, to break every chain, to break every chain. There's nothing too big or too small for you, my Jesus. Oh, yes, oh, yes, oh, yes. Oh, get ready. I hear the chains falling. Oh, I hear the chains falling. I don't know what your chain is, but get ready, get ready. Oh, oh yes, I hear the chains Falling, whatever virus you're having right now, get ready, get ready. I hear the chains falling. The spirit of depression gotta flee right now. Come on, I hear the chains falling. I see families reunited right now. Come on, come on. I hear the chains falling. Oh yes, oh yes, I hear, I hear the chains. Power 
in the name of Jesus. Yes, 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 yes. There is power in the name of Jesus. Oh, get ready, get ready. There is power in the name of Jesus. Oh, there is power in the name of Jesus. Oh, we thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord. Because every time we lift your name, oh yes, I know, I know, things begin to happen. The atmosphere begins to change. Oh, get ready, get ready. Hallelujah. There is power in the name of Jesus. Yes, there is. There is power in the name of Jesus. He hasn't turned his back on us. There is power in the name of Jesus. All you got to do is cry out to him. There is power in the name of Jesus. He'll give you the strength when you have no other. There is power in the name of Jesus. He'll give you peace when there is no peace. And there is power in the name of Jesus. Don't give up. Don't give up because he hasn't given up on you. There is power in the name of Jesus. To break. To break every chain. To break every chain. To break every chain. Woo! To break every chain, to break every chain, to break every chain. Oh, yes, oh, yes, oh, yes. To break every chain, to break every chain, to break every chain. Oh, we thank you, Lord, because it's being done right now. Oh, yes, oh, yes, hallelujah, we surrender all to you. Here is our heart, here is my heart, Lord, I surrender all to you, oh, yes. Lord, you know what our chains are right now, right now. Get ready, it's being broken, it's being broken. Oh, 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 oh yes, oh, yes. Hallelujah. Jesus, Jesus. We thank you for your presence. Not only here, but as those are watching online. Hear our cry, hear our cry this morning as Pastor Sue continues from here. Oh, yes. Lord, use Pastor Sue. Give a word to speak to the people. Oh, Reminded of the word that you brought to my heart yesterday. It's still burning in my heart today. And Lord, in the book of Isaiah, when Isaiah was called, he says, Lord, I stand before you as a person with unclean lips. And your presence has reminded me of who I really am. And the Lord spoke. I have searched and I have looked and trying to find someone to stand in the gap. And Isaiah spoke boldly, here I am, Lord, send me. And Lord, we're undone when we're in your presence. We're undone when we see who we really are from your sight. But God, your word teaches us who could stand if it was not for the forgiveness that you have for us, Father. Who could stand in your presence because of the iniquity and the sin, but because of your great forgiveness and your bloodshed, Father God, we can boldly come to the throne room of God and we can ask for mercy and we can ask for grace and we can ask for forgiveness. And God, you are a just God and you're a rewarder, Father God, of those who diligently seek your face. And God, we're here this morning to cry out to you 
to seek your face, not only on the behalf of ourselves, because, God, we need it, but behalf of those people, Father God, that have no one to stand for them, for those, Father God, that are feeling hopeless and lost and have chains that bound them up. Yesterday, the Lord told me that was the song. That was the song because people need to know God does not want us bound to anything, anything. So, God, you break every chain of sin, of sickness, and of disease, Father God, because you and you alone have that authority and that power. So, God, we just turn that to you. Father God, I ask you today to put a special blessing on Pastor Grant as he's at school and he's teaching chapel. And, Father God, you know that is the love of his life, is to be able to minister to children. And that's what makes him such a gentle heart toward people, God that he keeps his heart clean before God. So I ask for that anointing today. I ask, Father God, that there would be children that would turn their lives over to you, God, today. And I ask that there would be teachers and parents that sit in that meeting, Father God, that make a decision to turn to you. And so, Father God, I just turn that ministry to you today, waiting to hear a great report. Father God, there's so much sickness and death, and we are so sick and tired of standing and proclaiming, Father God, that you are a healer, and then to hear bad reports of this death or this death, but God, your way is your way, and it's not ours, and Father God, you know that you work all things out for good, even if it doesn't even look good, and Father God, I stand this morning, and I thank particularly of uh, Liam and Stephen Sanchez, Father God, not only did they lose their father, but they lost their grandmother to COVID and they live in the Philippines. So how hard it is on that family to try to be able to deal with everything they're dealing with and be so far away. But God, I know they know you. And so Lord, you can put your loving, compassionate arms around them, Lord, and you can touch them, Father God, in ways that no words that we have to say would comfort them, Father God. You could do that. Father God, we think of Robert Matistic, that's Dee's dad. And Lord, he's been diagnosed with aggressive prostate cancer. And Lord, we're just asking that in a couple of weeks when that surgery's done, Father God, that they'll be able to remove all that cancer, Father. And Lord, that when the radiation and the chemo is ready to be done, there'll be no need for it because you would have already been there, God, and you would have done that work. And so we thank you in advance for that. We think of Janelle and David Shear, Father God. They already have so many diseases. Uh, she has uh, cancer in her eye. He has all kinds of COPD issues, and now both of them are fighting COVID and having a hard time breathing and dealing with the health issues they have. And, and their daughter, who I haven't heard from for years, called in prayer for them. So, God, you're working on that end. And you are working through her to see that they get the prayer and the support that they need. And I thank you so much for that. And Lord D called yesterday. She broke her shoulder. She fractured her humerus. And now it looks like that there's a broken bone in her neck as well. So she goes to the doctor to try to figure out if they're going to do surgery or what they're going to do. Father God, we know that one touch from you would heal that shoulder would heal that humerus and would heal that bone. God, you've done that. I've seen, personally have seen you heal broken bones. So I know you can do that because I've seen that. And Lord, we ask for Lenny to shine. For some reason, God brought him into Michelle and Grant's life for a small season. And Father God, they really connected. But we got a report this week that he's fighting stage four cancer. But God, he knew who to call. He knew who to call, and so, Lord God, we just stand in the gap, and we make up the hedge for him, and we say, in the name of Jesus, we bind this cancer, and, Father God, your word proclaims whatever we bind in heaven and whatever we bind on earth is bound, so we bound that. There is no sickness, there's no disease in heaven, and when it says your kingdom come, your will be done as in earth as it is in heaven. There is none of that there, so, God, we just praise you and thank you in advance for that. Madonna, Father God, who lost her husband a few years ago, and now she's finding it hard to maintain her health and live by herself. And, Lord, she wants to stay in Sebastian because she don't want to leave her church. And, God, we're looking for an assisted living for her, but everything's just filled up right now. But, God, I know miraculously you can open a place for her so she can have a place to live where she can still come to church and where somebody can help her look after herself. And so, God, I just turn all that over to you. And, Lord, God, I just thank you for that. 
Lord, a sweet little Sharon Cartwright is so faithful in prayer. She's so faithful to have her list and praying over everybody that needs to be prayed for. But now, Father God, we need to stand in the gap for her. She lost her sweet husband, and she ministered to him for years. And, and God, we're rejoicing with her because we know that he's healed now. He's happy now. He's walking the streets of gold, and he's enjoying his time with Jesus, Father. And, Lord, still her heart hurts and aches for him because that's her husband. So comfort her, Father God. And, Lord God, she needs to have cataract, cataract surgery on her right eye. So we're just praying that that is a quick in and out thing and no issues with that. And we want to thank you for that. And, God, she didn't ask for prayer for this, but I know this. God, she's left by herself now. So financially, she needs to be taught and learn how she can live on her own and manage what she needs to manage with what she has. But, God, I'm standing here again as a personal testimony that where there's needs, God, you supply. You not only supply, but you give abundance. You give so that we can bless others. And I thank you for that. I thank you that for sharing. That not only she's going to be healed and her heart's going to be comforted, but, Father God, she will have her needs met. And I thank you in advance for that. Got a call yesterday afternoon that Vicki Kirkland, uh, we had prayed for her family a few weeks ago because her children's father passed away with COVID. And now she's had five ma major stents put in her heart. And the children are so grieved and they're so concerned. Father God, for her. Lord God, I know she was brought up in an atmosphere of knowing Jesus. And Father God, you know the situation in that family. So God, here I'm asking for restoration. I'm asking, Father God, that not only will you heal her heart, but that you'll bring her and her family back to you, Father God, in a way that they will serve you and know you're the God that made a way for all of this. And, God, I pray that you would comfort her, Father God, and, Lord, that she doesn't feel alone. And, Father God, that she does know that you're there and that you're ministering to her, Father God, and that you are the one, Father God, that has waited and waited for her to turn back to you. And I want to give you praise and glory for that in advance, Lord Jesus. Lord, I thank you, Father God, that you know before we even ask what our needs are. And, Father God, for we've prayed and prayed and we've been praying for over a year now, I know, for Ted and Chris Furling. And, Father God, it seems like no sooner are they rid of one disease to another disease pops up and, and they can't even get a handle on what's going on. And they've been to doctors and to doctors. And, Lord, it reminds me of the woman with the issue of blood. They spend all that they have and still they're not well. But, Father God, I ask for your precious Holy Spirit to meet them right where they are this morning, Father God, to talk to them in ways, Father God, that they can understand, to touch their bodies with the precious anointing, healing power that the precious Holy Spirit brings and that would manifest a healing. And, Father God, that there be testimony that that's what you did. And, Father God, I praise you and I thank you for that. Leah Wargos, another one, Father God, we've been praying for for months. They give up on her months ago, and they were waiting for her to pass away. Her husband is at home, and he takes care of her. He loves her. He just he loves every minute he's with her. And God, even after they've called palliative care in to take care of her, Father God, she still stays stronger and stronger. This is according to her husband. And then he was able to take her outside, where she loves being outside, to enjoy some of the sunshine. And, Lord, I just praise you for that time for them. God, we're still looking for a healing. Cancer don't mean nothing to you, Father. God, one word and that stuff's gone. You have healed it over and over again. So we believe that for her. And Lord, Jennifer and Brenda Jones, Lord, both of them having severe kidney issues with cysts. And, and Jennifer needs another kidney transplant. And Brenda is the one that makes sure that everybody's needs are met. She cooks and she cleans and she takes to doctor's appointments. And God, her whole health is at jeopardy because she never gets rest herself. And she's never able to take care of herself. And Father God, we just pray for that spirit of infirmity that has attached itself to this family that it needs to go. We pray, Father God, that you will provide the kidney that Jennifer needs. And Father God, that this kidney would function correctly. God, this will be her second transplant. And God, it seems like there's always something. And I know as long as I've known her, she's never really had a good quality of life to where she could go and do and be who she wants to be. And God, she longs for that. She desires that. And God, I just pray that you would let her be able to do that. God, touch her body, touch her spirit, Father God, and let them just...
I'm sorry, just let them learn how to get together and come in agreement in prayer for their whole household, God. For everybody in that household, that they will agree that the enemy has to be dispersed. God, this morning I'm sitting praying, and you told me plainly. Read Daniel. Daniel says that there is a delayer. There is a delayer that fights the answer to our prayers. There is a delayer that tries to get in the way when we pray and we believe God for the things that only God can do. There is a delayer that wants to make us forget about the promises of God. There is a delayer. But, Father God, you are stronger. Because in Daniel it says, you broke through. And you did what you could do, Father God. And you changed the whole situation around. So we come against the delayer. We come against that one that would stand in the middle of God answering our prayers. We stand in the middle of that one that would cause us to doubt and have fear and have dread. We stand, Father God, against that. And we ask, Father God, have your way and do what only, Father God, you can do. And, Lord, I was so happy to hear that John started his chemo yesterday. He started his first rounds of treatment, Father God, for that stage 4 cancer. And, God, they were having such troubles with finances and insurances and trying to figure out, Lord God, what they were going to do. And they were in panic mode. But, Father God, you came through like you always do. You provided a way that that insurance would be covered. And you provided a way, Lord God, that that chemo would start quicker rather than later. Now, God, we know that you use doctors and that you use medicine and that you use all these things to heal. But what really encouraged me, John says, I have no fear about this. I have no worry about this. I know God's going to take care of this. And so as he goes for his first four-hour treatment, Father God, I just pray that as he sits there, that you give him the words and you give him a testimony, Father God, that he can witness to other people there and encourage them with the same courage that he has. And I'm not afraid. I'm not fearful. And I know that God has got this. And, Father God, I pray for my own family, Father God, as sickness has been battling our family for a long time. And, God, I know that that is just a discourager. That is, again, just the delayer, trying to delay what we believe. But, Father God, I promised you a long time ago, as long as I have air in my lungs, I'll stand and proclaim your word, and I'll do that, God. So you do what you need to do, Father God, to make things work out according to your will. Because it's not my will, Father God, but it's your will that should be done. And I want to praise you and thank you for that. Lord God, I stand, Father God, in the gap and make up the hedge for our nation. Lord, have all my life, all these years I've lived, have I never seen our nation in such a shape as it is in now, God. And from the head, Father God, to the very bottom, there's always some kind of issue, some kind of problem. And God, it's because the focus is not on you. And God, turn us back. Turn us back to the place that we began when everything we did and everything we said and every law we put in place hinged on what you said first. God, I pray that you'd speak to our president, that you'd speak to his cabinet, that you'd speak to the lawgivers around, not only in Washington, D.C., but local here in Sebastian and all the way around, Father God, that they would govern according to the way, Father God, that you want them to govern. And, Lord, as uh, tonight... At sundown, Yom Kippur happens in Israel and Jerusalem, and the Temple Mount will be filled with people worshiping and praising and giving glory to God. Lord Jesus, I pray that they would see you, Father God, for who you really are. They would see you for the Messiah that has come, has laid down his life, and is coming again. And, Father God, I pray, Father Jesus, that you would touch that land. Father God, you tell us to pray that the peace would be within her walls. And, God, the enemy is constantly bombarding her. But, God, she's your chosen land. She's your chosen people. And so, Father God, we pray according to your world that there would be peace within her walls, Father God, that there would be peace within her walls, Father God. And Lord Jesus, we pray for all our churches, every church, whether it's in Sebastian, Vero Beach, Melbourne, any place in, in our community, Father God, that stands and preaches the true word of God. Lord, that your spirit would fall down and that your spirit would do a work and that we'd see pay people with chains falling off of them. We'd people see people saved and delivered and we'd see people falling under the anointing of God and and we'd see people learning to use their gifts the way you've called them to use them, Father God. 
And we praise you and we thank you for that. And Lord, tonight as our church opens up and there's many things happening on campus tonight, we ask that you would be with everyone that enters our grounds. Even if they drive by, God, let them know the presence of God is here, Lord Jesus. I pray that you would draw them in. That's not a one-time deal, God. You've done that many times. People have just been driving by and you've drawn them in and they're still a part of this congregation. So Lord God, tonight I'm thinking about Lord Jesus, the children that's in Bible Explorers. And Lord, we really need, Father God, for somebody to step forward and be willing to take on the mantle of teaching those little kids on Wednesday night. They're precious to you, God. If we get them while they're young, Father God, the Bible tells us to make sure that we grow them up in the way that they know you. And when they're old, Father God, they won't depart from that. So we believe for that, God. We pray for the people that are coming and that are helping, that are filling in the gaps, Lord Jesus. We praise you for those people. Send people alongside them, Lord God, so that they'll have help. And, Lord, we pray for the 180 team tonight as they minister to the teens, Father God. We pray that a special anointing would fall down. And, Father God, that those children would see that there's a God that loves them and there's people that loves them and their hearts and minds would be changed. And, Father God, even if there's a glimmer of hope, it's worth going forward. And, Lord Jesus, we pray for the Man Up group tonight. Lord, we're seeing such an outpouring of the men just burying their hearts before God and being real before God and becoming strong for you, God. And that's what your body needs, Father God. It needs strong men in strong places so that your hand will be strong upon this place. And I thank you, Father God, as the men come forward tonight and as Gary and Jim share with them, Father God, that they'll be open to what the Spirit of God has to say. And not only open, Father God, but willing to do it, no matter. Because, God, we can hear the word until we fall dead. But you keep telling me unless we're doing what the word says we're tinkling brass and sounding symbol we're getting nowhere God and so Lord I just ask you for that and Lord God I ask you tonight as we are in main sanctuary and Lord as I finish my last class tonight Lord Jesus on on reconciliation Lord God that you would dot every I Lord and that you would cross every T in people's minds because chains are holding them back Chains are holding them in unforgiveness. Chains are holding them where they think they can pick and choose what sin. God, that's not you. We lay it all down at your feet, and we will humble ourselves and get pride out of the way, Lord Jesus. You do what only you can do. So, Lord, I just ask that you would be with us all that are underneath the covering of Riverside Church and those that are watching online, Father God, whether it be on Facebook or YouTube or whatever, uh, whatever they use, Father God, to be in touch. And not only, Father God, would they watch online, but they would have a desire to join us in the house of God. Lord, my heart grieved last week when I heard somebody telling another people, church is just not necessary anymore. Well, I beg to differ with you. Because no place do I read in the Bible where Jesus came on the scene on the scene that he didn't find the first temple, the first tabernacle, and he was there preaching and teaching. Must be something to that. So, God, I'll just say you bring them in. You use them, Father God, and build your church. And, Father God, it is necessary that we have a building. It is necessary, Father God, that we gather together in the household of faith. It is necessary for that because we need community. We need each other. And, Father God, we need to be willing to submit the things that need to be helped. We give you all the praise for that. We give you all the glory for that, God. And I just ask you, bring them from the north, south, east, and west, Father God. And, Lord, let us be ready to serve them when they come. And I give you all the praise and glory. I turn this day over to you, God. And I ask you to be the author and the finisher as only you can be. In Jesus' name, and everybody that loved Jesus said, Amen.